What's up, everyone? Welcome back to The Collider Studio, presented by Saratoga Springwater. I have the pleasure of chatting with some of the team behind the movie, Rylane. Congratulations. Feels like a like a one of a kind style, tone, comedy, drama, mashup that comes together like better than I ever could have imagined had you given me just the script and the script alone. Oh, thank you. I'm very thank impressed. Thank you so much. I actually shouldn't say that. And I'll I'll pose that question to you first before we even jump into a synopsis. But how much can you feel what this tone, what the tone of the film is supposed to, you know, look and feel like just based on like black and white text on a page? I think because we know South London, you understand the heart of it. So even though it might not be like apparent to someone that doesn't get the like references and the nuances, but to us like seeing it on the page and then like understanding like Rain, Rain is like an author and like her perspective on filmmaking, you immediately can sort of get a feel for what it would be like, yeah. What, could you, would you mind asking the question again? Yeah, please? just the idea of having a, having a movie that has such a specific and unique feel to it, mm. that feels to me at least from my limited perspective, like it only really comes to life with your cast, your edit, the energy, the colors on set, if you're able to actually see that when you're just reading the words on the page? Um, really good question. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, I guess I'll answer it by saying that um, when I got the script, it definitely felt like there was space to elevate it and bring my kind of world building to the whole thing. Um, so I would say that, you know, the script is so funny and that you know it's it's so funny but it's also really simple and i think that gives you the opportunity to um go kind of wild with the craft you know um and that's a huge part of what i do every little thing every little detail and i can talk about the actors because that's a whole other kind of element but world building is like my favorite thing to do and um when you uh, every little piece of what I make is kind of connected, you know, from the costume to the to the color grade to the edit to the hair and makeup. Um, but then you put really good actors in <laughs> who totally understand the story and totally understand the characters and have their own unique way of showing these people that are just so representative of like London now. Um, so yeah, I'd, Maybe I didn't answer that question exactly, but I guess I kind of explained that what, you know, from script to making it, that, that process, that's the kind of the process for me. I've gotten greedy and I've already started talking details about your movie. Our audience might not know what Rye Lane is about just yet. So, Rain, I'll give these duties to you. Can you give a brief description of what the movie is? Yeah, um, it's so funny. We keep giggling about this because <laughs> we were like, so many people are going to ask us what it's about. And we're like, how do you? <laughs> but it's a very simple, you know, it's, it's t two people that meet kind of at the wrong time, but they're pretty perfect for each other. Um, and they have a really fun day in South London. Okay, now I can go back to specifics. You just brought up the idea of it feeling like the script had room for you to evolve it. I guess, what is it like seeing room for a script to grow and not interpreting that as a negative thing versus a positive, not, not feeling like it's already full and that gives me confidence? Um, well, I think, I guess there's a huge Development, people don't really talk much about development and it's so key. I mean, we developed the script for like a year and a half. Um, I think it was a year and a half, <laughs> something like that. Um, and I guess I never look at anything as finished until I'm me like making it. And it, it, in a way it's, it's weird now because it's like it is finished and I can't do anything. I can't change any little thing. Um, but yeah, the script, it's always a process, I think. It's always developing. And, you know, working with Vivian David was great because for me, I want to work with actors and I want them to say, I would never, that, that character, I don't think they would ever say that, you know? So it's never, fi it's never kind of finished black and white, in my opinion. And it's never finished from the audience perspective, too, because now you're giving your baby out to the world and everyone will have their different interpretation and it'll keep the conversation alive. I love yeah, it. Yeah. For my stars here, 
what is something about your character that you were most eager to play when you first booked the role, but then what is something you discovered during the filmmaking process that was more fulfilling than you ever could have imagined? <laughs> Pressure's on. <No. laughs> um, what was interesting about Dom, um, I guess, I guess, I don't know, I guess I'm always drawn to like characters who aren't, uh, your regular guy or, or young black man. Um, so Don was, even though I recognise him being from South London, supports Crystal Palace. I don't support Crystal Palace, but he's a football guy. Um, you know what I mean? Like I, like I recognise all that in him, but he's also like very strange. Like he, you know, he gets it wrong quite a lot of the time. Like, um, and I like that because it meant that um, he doesn't think the same way I do. Do you know what I mean? I had to like. I think I got maybe a bit more game than him. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that, Rain. Um, but, but you know, um, uh, but something else that I, I found interesting when I was finding him with Rain actually is, you know, I didn't need to do so much sometimes. Like Rain's a master, in my opinion, at stripping things back. Even though it's like a romantic comedy and there's so many layers to it, Rain's just amazing at going, oh, like you can just like, you can just be there. And that was really, that was really awesome. Yeah. Um, for me, I think, I personally would like to think I'm a very rational person in like my personal life. Yaz is like entirely impulse, like and entirely like devoted to living in fantasy of her own design. And I was just really excited to like be occupy like a character who just she's kind of like a whirlwind and like she spins through everyone's life and she would just keep on keep on keep on spinning and she'll pick you up and she'll spit you out if, if you don't agree with her fantasy and I think that devotion to like yeah that and like escapism I was like this is really really fun um I think yeah again I would say as well what I discovered in like the playing of it is like just not thinking too much and just being and again that's like credit to rain like and all the kind of mumbly like messiness that come out like that would come out like very naturally like in speech like that's all adding to the character stuff that you kind of be like oh shit like i maybe shouldn't have said it like that or was that even audible <laughs> like like stuff like that was like the flavor and like the seasoning which added to her um yeah it was raw Ooh, many follow-up questions. You use the word impulsive. When you're playing a character who's so impulsive, do you have to have like an anchor or a guiding light so that no matter what decision she makes, it's always based in some sort of consistent truth? Um, I think uh, the consistent truth that I found with Yaz is that she just has an endless curiosity for the world. And so she, if someone's doing something, it's like, why are they doing that? She's gonna constantly like challenge people. She's gonna constantly push boundaries because, and it's not because she's like an antagonist. It's literally just curiosity. Obviously that pushes too far. She doesn't believe that she shouldn't be able to do anything because to her, she can justify anything. But that was kind of like, yeah, but grounding it in like a curiosity as opposed to like something else was a way to stay kind of honest. To also like, the, there's like a childishness about her, which I think kids are quite curious as well. So yeah, that helped me ground it for sure. So we've gotten your perspectives on what came out of your characters along the way. Rain, I'm curious for you, especially because you brought up uh, how much you developed the script. Is there anything that they brought out of their characters or this story on set that made even you go, I didn't realize this element of our material was as strong as it is? I think they brought everything to it. You know, I think, um, that's, you know, it's almost like, in a way, you if you cast a really good actors, you don't really need to direct them that much. <laughs> it's kind of lazy. Uh, no, but I, um, I mean, they brought everything to it. I couldn't have imagined it being, yeah. I, I, I can't. Yeah, I think watching them. I mean, cutting these two was hilarious. Um, <laughs> but um, I think that the actors just. I like building worlds and I love finding people that can just bring something to that I would never bring to it. I think as a director, your job is essentially surrounding yourself with people that are better at things than you. You know, that is the job. So when you get really amazing actors, 
it's a joy and it's kind of like, oh, whoa, it's everything. So, yeah. Perhaps better at specific things than you, but if you're not the best possible leader you can be, <laughs> then all of their work goes to waste because you have to bring it together. Yeah, I, but <laughs> I, I am really good at bringing things together, but, I, but they are, I could never... I could never act. <laughs> I very much understand but that. I, That's why know, I, I sit here and admire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was reading a little bit in the production notes about the significant amount of people on this production, both in front of and behind the lens, who are making their first feature. Why was that appealing to you rather than it feeling like a risk for someone to have a first on your feature film? I think, um, I think when you think about, I mean, I definitely feel that my favorite creators rather than directors i think creators always have their own worlds and that's that's done by working with people that are unique and haven't you know that have kind of got a slightly different take on things so i never really i was never that bothered about working with anyone that you know had got masses of experience specifically in in um in feature films a lot of the crew uh, came from commercials, music videos, shorts. They're people that I work with all the time. They know exactly what I like. They know what I don't like. They know when I'm being a bit weird that it just means that I'm panicking and they need to reassure me rather than, you know, there's, a, there's like a real shorthand there, which is amazing. Um, and it was a joy to make, to have that thing where it's all our first feature together. It was, it was unique. Sounds silly, but one of my favorite things to learn about is a director's monitor dance. Like when, what signals to you two that Rain feels like you've nailed a take and you can move on? Rain, Rain don't, act, Rain doesn't actually even have signals. Rain will just be like, great, yeah. loved it. It's, it no, it's, it's, it's <laughs> great, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, 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 great. Oh no, do I really say no, that? No, she's got the best Mancunian voice as well. So you just, once you hear that boom across the monitor, right. you're like, all right, let's move on. We're yeah. fine. Well also, cause we were shooting during COVID yeah. and I, my eyebrows are quite worried. <laughs> so they kept looking, I had this mask on and they kept looking at me and David would always go, are you okay? <laughs> and then I'd have to go, it was really great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I struggle with uh, trying to pull positives out of the pandemic, but sometimes I find that when you're used to working a certain way and those things are stripped away, you realize that there are other corners of your craft that are valuable that you never would have had mm. access to had you had your usual, your usual way of working an assortment of tools. So going through this process, is there anything new each of you discovered about your craft for that reason? Oh, like, like m massively, you know, um probably goes without saying like I'm so grateful to, to Rain for, for having me I'm sure Viv will say the same in this film because it, this is this is my first feature film I still feel like incredibly inexperienced in everything like life um, so to be in in this film and obviously Fritz and I come to Sundance number one is crazy but number two like I was able and it's every job that I get now it, it feels that way I was able to like learn so much about myself and how to navigate even just set, you know, like I'm, I'm, you know, I like to think I'm good at like maybe tackling the mental of a character, but then you have to deal with like some boom like dangling in front of your face <laughs> hair and, and all these kind of things. So Rain giving us the opportunity to do that, it, it was everything. So I can't even pinpoint one thing. It was like everything. Yeah, I think for me, I just believe creatively across the board limitations are really important I think they birth like the most interesting work like if you have to find a workaround for something um and yeah so COVID was like the maddest limitation um I think the isolation and the subsequent insanity that was like in my mind from being isolated for so long really helped me to create the fantasy world that Yaz wants to occupy because I think we spent the whole the, the like the previous two years before I did the job I was just imagining being outside imagining having fun like imagining seeing my friends and then like stepping into a character whose whole thing is like this is what I want this is what I want to believe my life to be so I'm gonna believe that my life is that it kind of helped inform Yaz in like a really like backdoor type of way that I didn't expect um yeah that makes so much sense. How about for you, Rain? A new a new tool in your directing toolkit, maybe, that now you can take on to future films. 
yeah d so sorry the question was about sort of the restriction of covid mm -hmm. and how that makes you uh, what that teaches you about and discover new corners yeah. of your craft that you wouldn't have been able to with all the typical resources yeah i think i mean a big thing for me is i love crew and i and i always value everybody on set and i think i actually kind of want to like big up the covid like specific people um you know every morning putting like cotton buds up people's noses it's like and being really nice and really respectful and kind about all of that and having to go up to people constantly you know on set and saying sorry would you mind like stepping for you know like that job i just respected it so much and and um it really it weirdly that specific role i've got a lot of respect for but it also made me just love crew <laughs> even more um, because it's not easy and it, and and it's a it's intense you know it's a lot it's long days and it's it's just hard um but yeah so i i guess it it almost like just re-emphasized how much i love working with the crew yeah and shout out to that was mel mel melissa would yeah, come yeah. on set Do you remember mel mel would like you know just, just bouncing off what rain said it, we were like I don't, it was it's actually compliments rain again like we were like a proper family like yeah. so it meant that no matter what we were going through it was just like mm. coming on set making it work and like you know it was it was unlike anything else like mm. i've been on to have that family during covid especially when people just wants to like you know go home or go out or do something else we were like no we want to come to set and we want to like we don't yeah. care about the mask like it was it was it was a special time like what six weeks like insane amazing everyone yeah. has their own unique approach to making films but i'm just a big believer that a company should feel like a family like mm. whether whether it's because of challenges uh involving covid or not making a movie is a really challenging like miracle mm. and if you're going to go through all that you better have a supportive family around you and not just colleagues in Absolutely. my opinion, at least. Yeah, it's key. It's just like, be kind. And I think everybody on that, th that's a big thing for me. It's like, I have to work with kind people. People can be difficult sometimes or hard or very opinionated, but if they're kind, they're good. Like, yeah. And that was the really nice thing about um, Rye Lane. It's everybody on that was is is <laughs> was kind <laughs> is kind <laughs> and when when you're kind and supportive you can overcome challenges so mm. can you each name a day on set when something wasn't going to plan you found a creative pivot you found some magic that you wouldn't have otherwise and the scene is better off for it rain why are you laughing <laughs> <laughs> so no i know i know them i think but anyway sorry <laughs> no i mean i don't know every day was peachy um, <laughs> Vivian, you. Go. Um, who's Vivian? David, you. Go. <laughs> um, no, do you know what? We we okay. Look, we we had some a couple challenging days, and it could be miscommunications and like time is like you just said. Um, making a film is uh, a miracle. You know what I mean? There's so much that goes into it. So time restrictions come into play, like the producers on on Rain's back and Rain's trying not to let us know that they're on their back and we've got to shoot like a very emotional scene where we're like screaming at each other in 12 minutes. Um, you know, I'm going to generally say those those days were a the little... The time thing is hard off. because I think as well, because it's everyone's first, everyone cared so, so, so much. So everyone, and everyone is so meticulous about like what they do mm. and so like it takes time to put like Olan Kalandri the um, cinematographer is just the DOP he amazing. is just so 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 amazing but like the detail that goes into every single shot of rain us like everyone you know so I think that then adds up and then suddenly you have two minutes left like to shoot like a mad scene but yeah it's like again without the familial dynamic we wouldn't have been able to kind of overcome that but mm. it kind of when you have a little bit of frustration from elsewhere, you can plug it into the scene and then it works. So. Mm. Also, like it's like you know, it goes without saying. Like this is this is like an in, this is an indie film, you know. So like like not like it felt to me like yeah, it's just a miracle us making this how it how it was and like Rain like really putting her foot down and having like a detailed vision, mm. but and the, but like us not having time, but she somehow found finding time and communicating it to us, communicating it to Olan, communicating it to Anna, our wonderful, um, Anna Rose, our wonderful production designer. Like, you know, it was, it was, now I'm thinking about it, it was tough, but to us, we were like, <laughs> we're on set. <laughs> <laughs> having the best time.
Yeah, time, I agree. I think time is the, the hardest thing. And it's also, again, like as a director, you have to respect everybody's craft. So the cinematographer needs time to light, the art department needs to dress the set, costume need time, you know, makeup need time. Everybody needs time to do their best. And then you end, up, you end up going, right, we've got five minutes to shoot this scene. The actors need time. They, do, they need to be happy with what they've done, you know. Um, and I need time to, to feed into them. And, and I think, luckily, everyone's really good, so they can do <laughs> it quite quickly. But, um, yeah, there are a few occasions where, I think particularly where it was just about light, you know. Everybody has that thing, light. Um, which is the one that I thought maybe with David specifically, oh. because... We were running out of t we were running out of light, and it was a really difficult scene. And you know, but um, yeah, time. <laughs> time. Sometimes I play a would you rather game, and I'll ask filmmakers, would you rather have more time or more money? More money means more time. Sorry. You cheated. More money you cheated. It does, <laughs> but it does. It makes sense. No, but more more money um, because I think people should be paid well to achieve what they want to achieve and, t and but that means they have more time sorry <laughs> so it that's a really annoying smug answer they, but it, they go but hand it in does hand. me <laughs> if you find loopholes in my questions i <laughs> applaud them i also applaud the three of you you're exceptional in the film and how it all comes together really is something else and it makes it a highly unique experience congratulations thank, on you. thank you so much thank, you. thank, thank you. everybody out there rylane keep an eye out for it and stay tuned we'll have more from sundance 2023 for you soon